Welcome, dearest friends. We are ready now to start our meditation, Vesak Full Moon Meditation. And we have been given already some instructions throughout the day, but if there are now anyone new, so um, just have water available for you. We will have a little water blessing and um, actually we don't do this blessing. It is done by the much higher forces, but we uh, imaginatively then continue that blessing using the water and also you can then save the water for the coming days and your ritual work. Just a little bit about this chart. There has been already many who have been referring this conjunction, which is going on now in the sign of Taurus, where the sun is as well. So there is this conjunction between Uranus and uh, Jupiter, which are very powerful together. Both are related to light. And when we think about Taurus and the whole idea of Taurus is about light. So there is a strong emphasis. But for me, something really in interesting is there is this T-cross. You know that it is said that the T-cross is the most difficult and uh, because it is also this the full moon moment, the sun and the moon, father and the mother are uh, in alignment. And this is the uh, marriage indicator. Always when we have the full moon time, it is this symbolism of marriage. And then we have really close now the Pluto, and why we are thinking about Pluto is that the Pluto is the one which is indicating for us the opening for initiation. It's one of those marks. And then when we have T cross, it is something which is like the cross over Peter, how he was crucified, the head downwards, meaning that these energies are flowing towards the head center. It's difficult, but it is the mastering uh, formation. You can think about those who understand about sailing. I am not good in that, but I have understood this metaphor that it is like the sight wind, the most difficult wind to sail. When you master that, when you master the wind, uh, the, and you can sail, um, with the with the side wind forward, then you have mastered it, mastered something, and this is what this cross means. It's difficult, but really, from the point of view, the soul is the most welcome wherever we have the crosses in general, because via the crosses the spirit manifests, and then we have uh, now Aries in Aries the. Uh, ruler um, Venus which is the soul indicator and when it is in the last decade of Aries we have there very interesting thing going on it's the decade where the um, hero Perseus is killing the um, Medusa which is indicating the illusions so we have powerful energies there to help us. And then we have the notes there in this kind of uh, points where it is said that the serpent spits fire. And of course, so much to be said, but we are just um, because Francis was opening this and Alexander was talking about that. So let us not dwell more in the astrology, just knowing what one can be using. And of course, you who know something about astrology, you can think about in which houses, in, the, in what realm 
of your life, this T cross is falling. Where is he, the house where you have Taurus or houses? So we will leave it now and think about something very interesting about Taurus. If you remember that Taurus is one of the signs where the fourth ray is very strong. The fourth ray is related to whole humanity. But uh, when we think about Taurus and then uh, this um, mm, uh, integration formulas related to fourth ray. So let us listen a little bit about that you can meditate along along this um, um, integration text by Tibetan. And also you can reflect that how it is related to our crisis or telling about this crisis a lot. This ray which is uh, working through and which is coming into more powerful point next year on. Uh, this formula refers to the inner conflict between soul and personality, what all these formulas are. And it is recognized as such by the disciple. But it has obvious and great relevance to the outer world situation too at this time. And this is coming from the esoteric psychology too. The disciple recognizes the following truth. Midway I stand between the forces which oppose each other. Longing am I for harmony and peace and for the beauty which results from unity. I see the two and think about uh, Taurus. Taurus has two horns, which is telling about this split. And of course, we all have two eyes, but this is telling about the split. But now what is developed in Taurus is this one eye. I see not else but forces ranged opposing, and I, the one who stands within the circle at the center. Peace I demand. My mind is bent upon it. Oneness with all I seek, yet form divides. War upon every side I find and separation. Alone I stand and am. I know too much. And here comes the advice. The love of unity must dominate and love of peace and harmony. Yet let it not be that love which is based on a longing for relief, for peace to self, for unity because it carries with it that which is pleasantness. The word goes forth from soul to form. Both sides are one. There is no war, no difference, no isolation. The warring forces seem to war off, war from the point at which you stand. Move on a pace. See truly with the opened eye of inner vision, and you will find not two, but one. Not war, but peace. Not isolation, but a heart which rests upon the center. Thus shall the beauty of the Lord shine forth. The hour is now. This fourth ray crisis evoked by a right understanding and a right use of the fourth ray formula 
produces the following sequential results. A sense of isolation. One is overwhelmed with a sense of a real clarity or vision in relation to the problem with which one is faced or one's unique response to it, and also with a sense of aloneness, which is devastating. Two, a sense of despairing futility. The forces arranged against the disciple, humanity, seemed so great and our equipment so inadequate and feeble. 3. A determination to stand in the midst, and if not victorious, at least to refuse to admit defeat, taking with determination the position which Saint Paul expressed in the word, having done all to stand. And that we can think about now that this T cross here, which is teaching that. For a sudden recognition of the warrior within, who is invisible and omnipotent, but who can only now begin his real work when the personality is aligned, the crisis recognized, and the will to victory is present. We would do well to ponder on this. So let us now take a few moments to do just this and ponder on these words of the Tibetan and see what insight and enlightenment we can get from them. A sense of isolation a sense of despairing futility, a determination to stand in the midst, the noble middle path, a sudden recognition of the warrior within, And now we will say together to keynote for the disciple in Taurus, which we will be using and meditating, meditating, pondering along. I see, and when the eye is opened, all is illumined. There are actually two ways, but the one way is that I see and when the eye is opened, all is light. How the light, if it is pouring out, how the world would look like. How we would be looking at every each of others. how we will be looking at our lives, the world.
During each year, there are 12 and sometimes 13 full moons. It's a short period of time in which the moon is on the further side of the earth, and during which symbolically the spiritual radiation of the sun can reach the earth with no interference from the retrogressive influence of the moon. Each such period, such period offers a great spiritual opportunity to absorb the energies of the sign of the zodiac in which the sun finds itself. The zodiacal influences carried by the energies of the planetary rulers must be used by the human soul to build its heavenly temple on the higher mental plane. The temple not made with hands eternal in the heavens. When this building process is complete and it requires minimally millions of years, the human being is fully mature and stands on the threshold of becoming a master of the wisdom. A full member of the spiritual hierarchy of our planet and a wise and loving agent of the divine plan held within the mind of the God of our planet, the planetary Logos. Our task as aspiring souls in incarnation is to recognize the opportunity which the full moon periods present. We call these periods solar fire festivals to emphasize the fact that it is the solar energies we seek to absorb and build into faculty and ability, and not that all the decaying lunar forces which are to be recognized and then mastered. So we are ought to become like the sunflowers who are turning the face towards the sun and seeking the light, which is revealed then by Taurus. Let us for a moment again, as a group, prepare ourselves to really, to be ready for this impulse and for the real rays of the sun, the real life and real light. The festival of Vesak festival takes place at the full moon of Taurus. And it is a great Eastern festival 
but slowly making its way into Occident consciousness. This is the festival of the Buddha, the spiritual intermediary between the high spiritual center Shambhala and the hierarchy. The Buddha is the expression of the wisdom of God, the embodiment of light and the indicator of the divine purpose. We must regard the festival itself as a day of silence. Master says, I refer to an inner peace and silent solemnity that can be preserved unbroken, though the outer man may be serving with his speech and spoken interest. A day of service carried forward entirely on esoteric levels and of complete self-forgetfulness in the re remembrance of humanity and its need. So in our consciousness, let us turn towards humanity and reflect for a while what is your circle of service? And how you can bring from this Vesak something that you may make the change. This planet of ours, the Earth, is at this time the focal point of much attention on the part of the administrators of the plan. For today are working in conjunction with certain types of force and with certain spiritual entities other than those to be found at this time within the ring pass knot of our planetary life. The Buddha has a special function at this time as an interplanetary mediator and in this capacity and the coming Vesak festivals, he will attempt to bring certain spiritual beings into touch with our earth hierarchy. They have expressed themselves as willing to aid in the present crisis that aid if the effort proves successful, will come in the form of a much increased spiritual inflow of energy of a kind more potent and of quality somewhat different to any at this time pouring into and through our planetary life. Those aspirants and disciples who can train themselves to the realization of an increased spiritual responsibility and can preserve an inner quietness and a focused esoteric attentiveness can be swept into this tide of spiritual force 
and can then and thus serve humanity's need. As transmitters, they meet that need. As interpreters, they increase the capacity of the human being to respond and to understand. Also, let us realize here that when we talk about this um, training, we very seldom talk about the numbers. We can think about how the Buddha, he was alone and he was the first one who touched the cosmic mental plane. The Christ was alone as well uh, with the help of the angels. But when we think in relationship to humanity, the humanity was sleeping. And he was the first one to bring the will of God into this uh, relationship to humanity. So these, these are the principles. I have heard sometimes people talking about the, with distress, them comparing themselves, those who are drawing thousands and thousands of people. Well, that is their dharma. One has to find one's own dharma. But let us not forget it. It's not about the numbers. It is about this, what he was just saying, who can train themselves to the realization of an increased spiritual responsibility and can preserve an inner quietness and a focused esoteric attentiveness, they can be swept into this tide of a spiritual force and can then and thus serve humanity's need. As transmitters, they meet that need. As interpreters, they increase the capacity of the human being to respond and to understand. That is what Tibetan says many times, that it is needed that the humanity starts to respond. The barriers which separate man from man and nation from nation can go, go down. The spirit of peace can become so potent that naturally and sweetly the necessary adjustments can be made. The illumination of men's minds and the renewed organizations of man's efforts to brotherhood can be stimulated into fresh and increased activity. The hierarchy works through groups of souls, and the potency of this group work is to be tested out. These groups in their turn contact and feed the waiting, dedicated, identity, personalities. On the day of the full moon, we attempt to hold ourselves steadily in the light. We will not formulate to ourselves what will happen, nor will we look for results or for tangible effects. So now in our imagination, let us walk into the valley, the Vesak Valley. And because the mountain, the Kailash, Mount Meru is called also the Bell Mountain. So let us now all ring home, have the bell. So let us ring the bell as the sign that now we will enter into the valley of the Bell Mountain.
and let us be still. And now see before our eyes the Vesak Valley. And let us try to have some kind of contact. Master DK says that the imagination is and can come also very big help that imagine more in order to bring the energy down. Here you see uh, the, that rock that it is told that where the ceremony would take place. And if you see there where is this note of note and these tiny, tiny points there, they are actually our group then on the year 2000, on May 16th, when we were on that valley. So you can see that this rock is really huge. It's not little plateau, it's really, really big. And from that, for, for us, this is just to have this for your envisioning then when the moment comes. So here we have the Mount Kailash, Mount Meru. And that is 2000, this um, taken on 2000. There are our tents. But you can you somehow sense the majestic energy of this valley. When we stepped into the valley, there was a lark. That lark was ascending and singing. The sun was shining and it was really beautiful. And that is the northeast canyon. What is told that there, from that direction he comes. Then we have the Mount Nandi here, and which is the vehicle of Shiva, the sacred bull, which is indicating, again, I was talking about that earlier, the earth. Nandi, the bull, is the symbol of earth, planet earth. And there was a huge pole, which had, we don't see very well, but there are, again, thousands of these prayer flags. And on that, um, somewhere there, in, in that end, there was the, the place where people had been bringing their dead, members of the family. So there was dead and life in this valley. But that time, because it was um, after winter, so it is still very uh, brown. There were not a lot of uh, plants. I don't know how much there will be, but I guess so that there are some green coming. But there far away is the Lake Manasarova. And this, this is towards the south, and there is the prayer pole. And here, the great mountain. And it is said that it's not allowed to climb that mountain. So we heard stories that those who had climbed it, they didn't come alive from there. And then again, this direction 
from where it is set is coming. The holy moment and then him staying above that um, in a ritual which is said that the Christ is leading it. Lord Maitreya is leading it and that would stay last eight minutes and those who have the inner eyes they say that the the whole air is full of flowers pouring via his blessings it is said that with the central spinal system comprising the brain and the spinal cord is mysterious merudanda Meru Mountain, the world axis, and called also, called also Mount Kailas, the Bell Mountain. So the bell, you know that the symbolism of the bell, um, at least in Christian tradition, is to call forth for the service or sounding something special, special about the special moment, so we can have that in our minds when we near the moment of the full moon. So let us just again for your own preparation stay with this and, uh, and try to implement the image of the valley to yourself.
and let us hold the silence and prepare ourselves as a group standing there in the Vesak Valley, at the Sacred Valley. Group Fusion. We affirm the fact of Group Fusion and integration with the heart center of the new group of our servers. Mediating between hierarchy and humanity. And we say, I am one with my group brothers, and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates read and encourage them. alignment. We project a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy of the planet. The planetary heart, the great ashram of Sanat Kumara. And towards the Christ at the center of hierarchy. Extend the light, the line of light towards Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known. higher interlude. Hold the contemplative mind opened to the extraplanetary energy streaming into Shambhala. and radiated through hierarchy. Now using the creative imagination, endeavor to see the three planetary centers, Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity, gradually coming into alignment and interplay.
aligning around the world with a new group of world servers in different countries. And the triangle work, the golden network, and with the inner hierarchy of workers. purification, the mental, and in silence say, O light piercing I, purify us, and silent all. purification, the astral, and say, O oh, sweet you of immortality, purify us. And silent om. purification, physical, and you can perform this pavilion of fire mandala mudra if you want to, and you have the image there on the screen. Let us build the imaginative, uh, imaginatively the sevenfold fire of love. which encloses the entire temple of the virtual meeting. Thus creating a sacred space. Envision a fierce fire of rainbow color spiraling out and beyond the center The sevenfold fire burns away all resistances and lower practices.
And now let us imagine purification of the whole personality. May the power which the enlightened ones know descend. May the spotless, purest great wheel, the eternal. Unmove Vajra, purify the three causes, mind, mouth, body, and their effects, words, desires, deeds of evil. By thy triple wisdom, may the balance come and the flame burn bright. We start now the process where we uh, align with Master DK. He has promised to be at present during the full moon times. And we will have a meditation where we actually imagine going to his place, sacred place on Himalayas. Align now for a while with him. At the times of the new moon and full moon, all the members of all ashrams meditate deeply in an invocative and an evocative manner. Let us be aware of that aligning with the ashrams that we are related to. find the inner union with this meditating high group.
Master Deke says, Two things I seek to say to you. These are days of spiritual opportunity and of world crises. Let us take these days of opportunity for us and now reflect towards the future for this coming year. And during this time of the full moon, during these sacred days, create to yourself consciously the steps what are you going to take during these last months of the forerunner? Question yourself, put yourself against the wall as we say in Finnish, and really demand from yourself what is going to be your input your service. Can there be any day that one is holding any negative thoughts or attitudes? Can there be any hour, even hour, as a group, how strongly we can stand in the fires of love. How ready we are to sacrifice our personal demands, the desires which always make us believe and fool ourselves. Can we be the silent ones? The silent ones of earth. Let us dedicate our work for the service of humanity. Center the consciousness in the head. Imagine yourself as retrieving even more consciously within towards that point of contact where personality soul and the teacher in the world of souls can meet and become as one. Now hold yourself as poised and steady as possible, reserving that detached voice as fully as may be during the following process, which is carried forward silently by the creative activity of the imagination.
standing at the Vesak Valley, but align with the Master TK's sacred place in Himalayas. With some of us, we have been already working this way over a year, and we may have the inner energetic contact. Imagine or visualize yourself as standing before a golden or ivory door. See that door slowly opening, revealing a long, low room with three windows, one looking east, one looking west, and one looking north. Seated. Seated before the eastern window on a low carved chair but looking towards you and therefore sitting with his back to the window. You may visualize your Tibetan brother in deep meditation, seeking to contact you and all of for whom he is as a teacher responsible. Now picture yourself as advancing slowly up the long room, which is his study and workroom. And then standing before him. See also your group brother standing with you and Krupp sisters. Now each of us can constitute himself in imagination as spokesman for his group and offer the group in service and deep consecration to the service of the plan.
see him slowly rising and turning towards the east. The direction of the teacher. Let us salute the teachers, the masters. We salute the seven Johans. Let us salute Master Moria. Master Kutumi. Master Paul the Venetian. Master Seraphis Bay. Master Hilarion. Master Jesus. The unnamed seventh ray Johan. Salutations to the three great ones, the Bodhisattva, the Manu, and the Mahajohan.
salutations to the three Buddhas of activity, Sananda, Sanaka, and Sanatana. Oh. Salutations to the three Lords of Liberation in Shambhala. Oh. Salutations to the Lord of the world, Sanat Kumara, our Father. Oh. Salutations to Christ, and let us say together, we have gathered in your name, Lord Maitreya, be with us. Now standing and facing towards the east, we will say together the great invocation. And this is a deep rehearsal and demands a lot of concentration, focusing. Endeavor consciously to follow the lead of Master DK as we say the words. Listen with care. And your intense concentration. And you need the practice of intuition.
it is thought that uh, the time of the Vesak full moon was also the time when the Lord Buddha left his physical body. So for that, let us hear a few words. This thought occurred to the Blessed One. It would not be right for me to pass away from life without addressing the disciples without taking leave of the order. Let me now, by a strong effort of the will, blend this sickness down again and keep my hold on life till the allotted time have come. And the Blessed One, by a strong effort of the will, bent the sickness down and kept his hold on life till the time he fixed upon should come, and the sickness abated. abated. Thus the Blessed One began to recover, and when he had quite got rid of the sickness, he went out from the monastery and sat down on a seat spread out in the open air. And the Venerable Ananda, accompanied by many other disciples, approached where the Blessed One was, saluted him, and taking a seat respectfully on one side, and said, I have beheld, Lord, how the Blessed One was in health, and I have beheld how the Blessed One had to suffer. And though at the sight of the sickness of the Blessed One, my body became weak as a creeper, and the horizon became dim to me, and my faculties were no longer clear, yet, notwithstanding, I took some little comfort from the thought that the Blessed One would not pass away from existence until at least he had left instructions as touching the order. And the Blessed One addressed Ananda for the sake of the order and said, What then, Ananda, does the order expect of me? I have preached the truth without making any distinction between exoteric and esoteric doctrines, for in respect the truth, Ananda, the Tathagata has no such things as the closed fist of a teacher who keeps some things back. Surely, Ananda, should there be anyone who harbors the thought, it is I who will lead the brotherhood, or the order is dependent upon me, he should lay down instructions in any matter concerning the order. Now, the Tathagata Ananda, thinks not that it is he who should lead the brotherhood, or that the order is dependent upon him. Why then should the Tathagat leave instructions in any matter concerning the order? I am now grown old, O Nanda, and full of years. My journey is drawing to its close. I have reached the sum of my days. I am turning 80 years of age. Just as a worn out cart can only with much difficulty be made to move along, so the body of the Tathagata can only be kept going with much additional care. It is only Ananda when the Tathagata, ceasing to attend to any outward thing, becomes plunged in that devout meditation of heart which is concerned with no bodily object. It is only then that the body of the Tathagata is at ease. Therefore, O Ananda, be ye lamps unto yourselves. Rely on yourselves and do not rely on external help. Hold fast to the truth as a lamp. Seek salvation alone in the truth. 
Look not for assistance to anyone besides yourselves. And how Ananda can a brother be a lamp unto himself, rely on himself only, and not on any external help, holding fast the truth as his lamp, and seeking salvation in the truth alone, looking not for assistance to anyone besides himself. Here in Ananda, let a brother, as he dwells in the body, so regard the body that he, being strenuous, thoughtful and mindful, may, whilst in the world, overcome the grief which arises from the body's cravings. While subject to sensations, let him continue so to regard the sensations, that he, being strenuous, thoughtful and mindful, may, whilst in the world, overcome the grief which arises from the sensations. And so also, when he thinks or reasons or feels, let him so regard his thought that being strenuous, thoughtful and mindful he may, wills in the world overcome the grief which arises from the cravings due to ideas or to reasoning or to feeling. Those who, either now or after I am dead, shall be a lamp unto themselves, relying upon themselves only and not relying upon any external help but holding fast to the truth as their lamp, and seeking their salvation in the truth alone, shall not look for assistance to anyone besides themselves. It is they, Ananda, among my bhikshus, who shall reach the very topmost height. But they must be anxious to learn. My age is now full ripe, my life draws to its close. I leave you, I depart, relying on myself alone. Be earnest then, O brethren, holy, full of thought. Be steadfast in resolve. Keep what's your, your own hearts. Who wearies not but holds fast to his truth and law, shall cross this sea of life, shall make an end of grief. These are my last words.
let us turn towards the greatest light that is released at this time and towards the forces of enlightenment. If you want to hold this wheel turning mudra, you can do that. He has completely turned his life wheel towards liberation and world worship. He is no longer a human being, but has become a divine creator, enlightened one, teacher of humans and gods. standing ready and we wait you hear the ring of the bell when the four minutes to full moon is coming and then you hear the bell the gong when it is the full moon moment and again when the four minutes is over you hear the bell and the group takes the inner position the post at the sacred valley We go into silence.
Let the forces of light bring illumination to mankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May men of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all men be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us do our part.
May I stand in the peaceful silent will of Shambhala. Let us merge with this great light pouring down, continuing its work, reaching us and pouring through us. We may visualize the energies of light and love and the will of to good pouring throughout the planet and becoming now anchored on earth in prepared physical plane centers through which the plan can manifest. Shambhala, Buddha and the Christ, masters and their initiates, the new group of our servers, men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world. The physical centers of distribution, London, Darjeeling, Tokyo, Geneva, and New York. The full moon day is the day of safeguarding. We are supposed to hold and work consciously in the ceremony. The Lord Maitreya has been leading the water placed ceremony, placing ceremony when Buddha was coming and giving his blessings around the world. So now the waters that we have available, we can see how the blessings of the great Lord has been descending and is still descending and we can see a new wave of love and light and will is precipitating. In your imagination, see all the waters around the planet, reaching the new rhythm of this blessing and the new seed for the new life everywhere, whatever you can imagine.
let us say, in the center of all love I stand. From that center I, the soul, will outward move. From that center I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the Divine Self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. Visualize the downpouring spiritual inflow released from Shambhala through the hierarchy and streaming into humanity through the prepared channels. Consider how these inpouring energies are establishing the pathway of light and is preparing the way for the coming of world teacher, the Christ Lord Maitreya. Now, dearest friends, I hope you are full of light and full of uh, inspired energy to give yourself for the service for the, our fellow beings. But let us have a little uh, ceremony now with this blessed water. We are going to sprinkle it to the four directions. So let us take the water and be ready now to four directions. So try to make sure where is the north, where is the south, where is the east and where is the west. And we say, love to all beings, north, south, east, west, above, below, love to all beings and sprinkle the water towards the north. Compassion to all beings, north, south, east, west, above, below. Compassion to all beings. Sprinkle now the water to south. Joy to all beings, 
north, south, east, west, above, below. Joy to all beings. And sprinkle the water towards east. Serenity to all beings. North, south, east, west, above, below. Serenity to all beings. And sprinkle the water towards west. Now the waters are all around the planet blessed and we will go now into the last part, closing part. And I'm going to open my um, video and I just don't see where's the panel. I so saw video panel here so that I, I know that I am in the video. So, dearest friends, thank you so much. And I really hope that you are full of energy to move on. So now uh, we do this way, that we have um, uh, two last pieces of music. And um, the first one is the one that we are taking the toast. And then the other one just follow so that uh, I am stopping talking and uh, while we are taking the toast please take your uh, open your videos and let us uh, hold our little family into this last uh, uh, moment of uh, rejoicing of uh, that blessed uh, possibility to be together and 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 uh, this is, as I said, this is uh, for the uh, saluting uh, Michael and all of those who have been already walking over the sea and uh, work and put their, their will on the other side. So we have to always remember that the group is not only on this side. And we will put our last piece of music and be ready and before then in the end so because after this i'm i don't want to talk anymore i just send you lots of love and gratitude and let us work hard now during these days and the coming months and let us start <laughs>
Yeah.